All right, we're going to look at a what is the continuity versus discontinuity debate in theology. This is another article from gotquestions.org <clears throat> revolving around dispensationalism and covenant theology. And uh, it's gotquestions.org slash continuity dash versus dash discontinuity.html. And it's, let's tell you up front that this article is complete bunk. We've already established that gotquestions.org teaches dispensational theology, and they uh, say they do not agree with aspects of covenant theology. So the question is, what is the continuity versus discontinuity debate? This is an article that I read early on, too, uh, as a new believer, trying to understand the Bible. And so this misled me, <clears throat> got me off track you know, for a while long time. <clears throat> the answer is the word continuity is defined as an unbroken and consistent ex existence or operation of something over a period of time. At its root is the word continue. Of course, discontinuity is the opposite, meaning a sharp difference in char of characteristics between parts of something. In theology, continuity and discontinuity are terms applied to the flow of sacred history of God's overarching purpose. I don't even know if I've heard this used except for in this article. Anybody talking about continuity versus discontinuity? I mean, in a way, maybe. I don't know. But whatever. So he tries to define it at the beginning. Whatever. Christians believe that the entire Bible is God's inerrant word and that it is divided into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The continuity versus discontinuity, or the Old and New Testaments, the continuity versus discontinuity debate has to do with how the two parts of the Bible relate and the application that it has for Christians today. Covenant theology often emphasizes areas of continuity, while dispensational theology usually emphasizes areas of discontinuity. And yes, there is a disconnect with this dispensational theology. There's a disconnect from um, the truth of Scripture, basically. The following are some of the issues that frequently come up in the continuity versus discontinuity debate. Are Israel and the church essentially the same body, or is Israel quite distinct from the church? Those who follow the discontinuity route hold that Israel is a separate group and see the church age as a distinct time in which God deals with the Gentiles. Remember, there's no such thing as the church age in Scripture. That's something that dispensationalism imposes on Scripture. While the church is removed at the rapture, which also isn't in Scripture, God will once again focus his attention on the salvation of Israel. <clears throat> Those who see continuity between Israel and the church will often speak of the church in the Old Testament and apply promises made to Israel to the church today. <clears throat> which is basically what we see in the New Testament, it's what, what the Hebrews teaches and what, what Paul teaches. If the church is essentially Israel, continuity, then it makes sense that all the law given to Israel would apply to the church unless a particular law has been specifically repealed. If the church is discontinuity, then it would make sense that none of the Old Testament laws would be in force unless they have been specifically applied to the church. So you can see a complete, total lack of understanding here, and uh, pretty much like straw man arguments also, because it's interesting to me, it seems like they're trying to say that, that uh, Israel, that the nation of Israel and the church are the same thing according to covenant theology, and there's no distinctions. When what, I think they're... <clears throat> What, what it really teaches, and what the Bible teaches, is that the church believes Israel, okay, not the nation of Israel. So there's a difference, there's a distinction between the true Israel, or a true Jew, and the, uh, the Jews who are, you know, Jews by uh, being descendants, or, you know, just circumcised Gentiles that converted to Jude, Jews, or whatever. Um, so... There's the spiritual Jew, the Jew who is circumcised, 
has the circumcision of the heart, and then there is, you know, the, the physical Jew who has the physical circumcision. And so the church, when I say that the church is Israel, Israel is the church, we're talking about the true Israel. We're not talking about just the physical nation of Israel as a well. um, And you see here that there's this misunderstanding of how to understand the laws, like the the, the laws with the Mosaic Covenant, um, and how they're not applied today. And they don't they don't realize that everything was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And so, um, okay, when he fulfilled them, they see this disconnect where they say they, they, they believe in a discontinuity to where, <clears throat> you know, like the Old Testament Jews had to follow, you know, these laws, and then the New Testament Christians follow this. You know, they're under grace, so they don't, they don't have the law, which is a total disconnect from what scripture teaches and um, it's kind of like also saying that it has partiality with you know these different groups of people that you know he treated some people this way and other people this way and they don't grasp how you know God had one plan through history and this is the Bible is this outworking and, and it's beautifully you know how, how it all works together um, so let's continue to read. Not a whole lot more, I don't think, but the issues involved in the debate between continuity and discontinuity are complex. And it's really not about continuity, discontinuity. So it's really kind of, that's a whole straw man argument. Um, but in reality, almost every theological construct, covenant, dispensational, or otherwise, recognizes some continuity and some areas of discontinuity. Every evangelical theology would recognize that the animal sacrifices have been discontinued as the sacrifice of Christ is once for all. Hebrews 10, 11 through 12. Likewise, every evangelical theology would recognize that the moral aspects of the law continue to be in force today. So it's almost like their understanding covenant theology. The best answer seems to be that there are some areas of both continuity and discontinuity that neither sharp discontinuity nor uniform continuity is warranted. Jeremiah 31 speaks of a new covenant with Israel that outlines a radically new way, discontinuity, of dealing with Israel, continuity. The New Testament speaks of believing Gentiles being grafted into Israel, Romans 11. This was something new that most never would have imagined possible, but it was revealed with the coming of Christ, Ephesians 3, 6. Jesus said he did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. In other words, he was not preaching something brand new, this continuity, but the culmination of what had been there all along, continuity. But Jesus' fulfillment had in it the seeds of discontinuity, because after the law had been fulfilled, it was no longer needed. Galatians 3, 24 through 25. God never changes, but the way that he deals with people can change. It is tempting to buy into a particular system of theology and then try to read the biblical data through the lens of that system. It is far better to understand the Bible on its own terms and affirm continuity where it exists and discontinuity where it exists. And then the source that it recommends is Dispensationalism by Charles Ryrie. That's one of the books that I have that I've talked about a lot. I want to look through that book some more today, too. Um, after going over the covenants, I kind of want to go back over dispensationalism. But uh, it's important to understand that God has, uh, that scripture is structured through the covenants. And um, so, yeah. Anyways, I'd like to know what you think. <clears throat> I see he says, our are Israel and the church essentially the same body, or is Israel quite distinct from the church? What's he talking about? Is he talking about the true Israel, or is he talking about the physical nation of Israel? It doesn't make sense.
Anyway, just a stupid article. God bless, guys.